Tuesday, we are back with Tier List. Tuesday, we're going to be going over Tier List, which by the title, probably a little confusing. I'm gonna go over exactly what it is, so let's go. So, in Smash Ultimate, a lot of people complain that either matchups don't matter or that a matchup chart is infallible and therefore there's nothing you can ever do about it. For example, if you fight Rob, you're like, oh, well, Rob has like 20 losing matchups, right? He has Cloud and Corrin and Pika and Samus and Yoshi and Steve, like, you know, a billion characters that he loses to, but he's still like top five, right? So clearly there is something else going on other than the matchups because the character has just inherent strengths that kind of nullify the strengths of matchups, right? That's basically what we're going to be talking about today. So I have my three tiers. Matchups don't matter, they cheese. Matchups matter, but you can definitely win losing ones and matchups define the character. So I'm gonna start off just straight up with the character I already mentioned for the example, Rob. Rob, in theory, has like a lot of losing matchups, right? But it's still Rob. He still has the best ground normal in the game or one of the best ground normals in the game. Zero to deaths, a basic, a really good disadvantage because it's consistent, right? He's not gonna die off of his disadvantage even though he might take a bunch of damage. Overall, some characters can, of course, kill Rob in disadvantage, which is when Mega Man, or sorry, when Rob might struggle. Like Mega Man, Corrin, Aegis, those matchups. But if you're getting hit up over and over and over again, it doesn't really matter, does it? So let's continue. I'm just gonna try to pick a random character. We got Lucas. Uh, I would say for Lucas, matchups define the character. Well, actually, Lucas definitely, matchups matter because I feel like the matchups that he struggles in are the matchups that don't let him play the game as much. Like he can still play neutral fine, but you know, he's not hitting the bigger punishes on them and they're just walling him out a lot. Matchups like Sheik, matchups like Steve. There are a lot of matchups that are pretty rough for Lucas, but at the same time, he still can just like zero you across the stage and forward air you, or like he has good edge guarding and he has amazing combos, right? So sometimes he just wins anyway. It's definitely not on the tier of just like, oh yeah, he just, his tools are inherently so good that it doesn't matter, right? So definitely matchups define him, but you can definitely lose ones. And again, this isn't going to be just like, oh, bad characters go here and good characters go here. That's not how this works, right? Next up is Marth. I'm actually going to put Marth also here, right? Matchups matter, but you can def win the losing ones. And that is, of course, because sometimes Marth kills you at super early percents, right? Down or forward smash, side B if you hit the tipper. Uh, this character has edge guarding, has a decent, like, he can play the game. There are characters that can cheese him, but he can also cheese back. Uh, so he can definitely win some losing matchups because you can just, you have the tools to outplay your opponent because you have a sword, you have a good out of shield option, you have a decent recovery. Uh, but there are definitely matchups that he's going to lose just because they're either really bad matchups or or the person can just be better. K rule? Uh, K rule is definitely a character. Matchups define this character. I feel like when people can edge guard K rule, or when they can, you know, have a really good punish on crown, or good grab combos, or just good advantage in general that ignores um, his like nair, that can be a really tough. Uh, thing. Of course, K. Rule also has winning matchups, right? But when he wins, he really wins, right? When they can't really punish his crown, when they can't really edge guard him, K. Rule is just so comfortable, right? This doesn't necessarily mean win versus loss, right? It just means, uh, like, do you win your winning matchups consistently? Do you lose your losing matchups consistently? Of course, the more important thing is losing because uh, it is definitely better to win losing matchups and it's worse to lose winning matchups. And of course, if you have a winning matchup of someone that's like in this tier, you might still lose anyway. But K. Rool definitely matchups to find the character. And I don't think his matchup chart's particularly good, but he does have a couple of good uh, matchups in the higher tiers, depend on where you put this character. But like Bowser, I think is a fine matchup for K. Rool. So yeah, Ken. Uh, I think Ken is one of these matchups that like, unless the matchup is so bad, like it's like Steve or Sonic, Hey, it doesn't matter if if the person's not perfectly nairing you all the or sorry, perfectly anti-airing your nairs or perfectly doing, you know, whatever they do to keep you out, you're gonna lose. Obviously there are edge guarding characters that he will still lose, but at the same time you can just be right a couple of times. I'm also gonna put Ryu here as well. Uh just because it's like their offense is so strong, they kill so early. Uh so definitely it's matchups that win uh, like people that re wins he wins super hard. It's so like matchups they win, they definitely win because it's characters that can't deal with their tools or don't have the out of shield options or don't have the edge guarding, right? But the characters that do have those tools and do win, like very few of them shut Ryu and Ken down other than like Sonic, Steve, and Pika, probably? Wolf. Wolf, in my opinion, is matchups matter, but you can definitely win losing ones. Uh, I don't think Wolf, like Wolf obviously has great strengths, right? Because he has his great air mobility and good combos, good advantage state. Uh, but I think matchups do matter against him because the matchups that Wolf struggles in, it's because they either out mobility him or like out damage him and it's where he can't play his best game, right? I feel like a lot of characters simply can't 
or a lot of characters shut Wolf down, not a lot of characters, but some characters shut Wolf down from playing his best game, and when that happens, like when you can't just play your game versus other characters, that is when it's going to be rough, if that makes sense. So I definitely think Wolf, he can win his losing runs, right? Like Pika beats him, but you can just play super well against Pika. You know, Rob beats him, but you can still play really well against Rob. It's just you're going to have to outplay more often with things that like are outside of your character's tools and more like your player's tools, if that makes sense. Dr. Mario! Hello, Editor Esam here. Uh, my stream was really weird that day, so I completely lost the Dr. Mario explanation. But basically, Dr. Mario is a character that can do a lot of damage when he gets in. So even though there are a bunch of matchups that will be difficult for him to get in, or they will edgeguard him or out advantage state him, if you get a couple of reads right, he kills super early, you know, down tilt up at the ledge as a two frame type of thing. There's a lot of ways for Dr. Mario to get wins. And if you aren't super good at dealing with like Pill, aka Combo T Jolt, then and it really becomes difficult as a player thing to deal with that. So Dr. Mario can definitely steal some wins and some bad matchups. Otherwise, this character wouldn't be winning at all because this character is bad objectively, but then he's just scary. So it ends up working. So yeah, Me Brawler just kind of hits you and kills you, and it's like really dumb. I feel like when I play matchups that are losing as his, except maybe his absolute worst matchups, uh, you can just get cheese, right? You can cheese with Heli Kick, you can cheese with Thrupper, you can cheese with his other uppies, Suplex Cheese, and also his neutral is just ridiculous and he does so much damage. This character is not honest, I don't care about his losing matchups. I mean, I will still go Pika in them, because I play two characters. But like, Me Brawler has plenty of ways around bad matchups, whether it's switching his moves or just hitting some BS, and he has a lot of it. So, yeah, he's a good character. Duck Hunt. I would say for Duck Hunt, matchups define the character. I feel like if you have a good way to deal with projectiles or you have a good way to edge guard him, it's rough. Similar to Cave Rule, right? If the projectiles work really well, the character does great. I mean, again, Duck Hunt definitely beats Diddy Kong, definitely does well against several matchups like Duck Hunt, or sorry, like uh, Jigglypuff and stuff like that. But at the same time, you do have uh, bad matchups for your character. Like char characters that reflect, it's really hard. Uh, like, you know, Duck Hunt will beat Samus and beat Diddy Kong, but like really lose to Falco and really lose to Pika. So yeah, definitely uh, matchups define this character absolutely. And again, unfortunately, they're not great matchups for Duck Hunt overall. For Meta Knight, I'm going to say that matchups matter, but you can definitely win losing ones, right? Because uh, Meta Knight, of course, matchups do matter. It matters who you get your ladder combos on easiest. It matters who you have the easier time versus because those matchups you're going to do really, really well. Um, it can be amazing to have your winning matchups and hit the combos and be good. Of course, you sometimes can lose neutral or like not get your big hits, but Meta Knight has enough ways to get big hits. And also he's able to edge guard, uh, which is the big thing about definitely winning losing ones. Cause I feel like all the matchups that Meta Knight loses that I can think of are still edge guardable characters other than like Pikachu in particular so it's like oh they out neutral me over and over and over again but like hey i hit you once and then i like down or down or back air do you or i nared you and his edge guarding is so good i feel like if you are an edge guarding character you can win losing matchups um for sure. And of course, Meta Knight does have like random combos that are still really, really good. And down B and forward smash, he has ways to get cheesy wins or like, you know, big reward wins, is, I guess is the correct way to say it. Um, so yeah, you definitely have to be careful against Meta Knight, but he can definitely win losing ones. But he's not really a cheesable character because he, you know, has a good recovery and has a good disadvantage state. The only way you get cheesed as Meta Knight is your up B falls out and then you die for it. In which case, like GG, shake your hand, you should have used the move better. Diddy Kong. Um, Diddy Kong, in my opinion, matchups define the character. Of course, Diddy Kong does have, uh, you know, a lot of just explosive offense, but the characters that Diddy Kong beats, it's because, sorry, the characters that Diddy Kong loses to, it's because he they shut down what Diddy's able to do. They shut down Monkey Flip, they shut down his recovery, they shut down Banana, they shut down his offense, and those matter, right? Like, Duck Hunt versus Diddy Kong sucks. Villager and Isabel versus Diddy Kong suck, and yeah, like, if you have way, if you have, like, a player that's as good as Tweak, sometimes that's not gonna matter, because Tweak is really, really good. But that doesn't mean that the matchups aren't definitive, right? Like you can of course outplay as a player, but I'm saying when you outplay as a character, right? So did he come to the matchups to find him? He has really good matchups, right? With like Aegis and like all the sword characters that he does really well against and just you know everyone without a shield, but like he can add a shield or that banana is like too good against. He does really well versus characters like Min Min and stuff, but he can still lose uh, to losing matchups for sure. Next up, Hero. 
Matchups don't matter versus hero. You just get good spells or you get crits, and suddenly, like, there's no matchup, in my opinion, that you either can't roll for any spells or that the spells don't matter. Spells are so impactful. You think you lose to a zoner, bounce. Uh, you are losing by a lot of damage, you got psych up and you broke their shield. There are so many, like, possibilities that you can just get the correct spell. You hit someone off stage at 50 and you kaboom them, or you get thwack, or you get whack, or you get accelerate and you can just go edge guard someone. It is really hard to consistently beat hero regardless of the matchups. Uh, like maybe like Fox is specifically like that matchup still really bad, but I think Paul took light to game five recently. I could be misremembering that. Um, but yeah, matchups don't matter against Hero. You just have to play perfect all the time. Corrin, in my opinion, is a matchups matter, but you can definitely win losing ones. Corrin's strengths are just strong, right? We see Shattuck, he's winning losing matchups all the time, and I don't think Shattuck winning suddenly means all these matchups aren't bad, right? Like, Fox Corrin, still Fox's favor. Corrin Samus, still Samus's favor. Game & Watch Corrin, still Game & Watch's favor. But the character strengths are good enough that sometimes it doesn't matter what character you are. You got hit off stage, you're gonna get two-framed. You got hit in the air, you're gonna die to up like the things that work for Corrin are universal so even though you might lose neutral more often or there might be struggles in like disadvantage you still have really really strong options offensively uh, to the point where sometimes the matchups don't matter that much like if you as a Corrin player can win against the best Samus in the world and the second best game watch in the world and like Pokemon trainers and like a bunch of these really really hard matchups and also like beat the top foxes and all that type of stuff obviously it matters right but at the same time it doesn't matter that much like not like this where it's defining like you're gonna lose the Malash trip every single time of course Shattuck is also just cracked right so is Neo uh, or Neo, but yeah, you can definitely, like, matchups matter for sure, but you still win, or you start, you stand, you still can win losing ones. Cloud. Cloud is, again, one of those characters. Matchups matter, but you can definitely win losing ones. Uh, he has a lot of control in neutral, and his offense is really scary. His defense is also surprisingly good. Like, it's not the best in the game, but it's good enough because his airspeed is really high. Uh, so he definitely has tools to win whatever. Um, but it's not like this where matchups don't matter at all. Like, they matter, but also his matchup chart's just ridiculous, so he doesn't really lose that many matchups. Ooh, the pits. Again, I always consider Pit and Dark Pit to be edge guarding characters. So I'm basically gonna put every single edge guarding character in this where like matchups matter because like do you have do you have a winning neutral? Do you have a losing neutral? What are you going to do in those regards? Uh, but at the same time, you can edge guard, so you down throw back or someone at 40, and even though it's a losing matchup, did you guess right and nair them or did you spike them or did you like whatever? Like that's totally fine. You know, Zachary took Sonics to game five with like some ridiculous stuff. Uh there's a lot of there's a lot that Pit and Dark Pit can do that kind of is universal, as I said. Obviously, it's not going to be super, super universal. There are characters with really good recoveries and really good whatever. Um, but, like, Pit can definitely win losing matchups just by, you know, using the really good tools that Pit has to make comebacks and stuff. Captain Falcon. I'm a Falcon believer. Also, like, it's kind of weird. Falcon is both ends of this can cheese characters because their advantage state is ridiculous he has up air to a billion things he has zero death combos he has like 20 death combos he has so many ridiculous open ups good out of shield he can edge guard all that type of stuff but also sometimes falcon just dies so sometimes he just gets cheesed but all like in matchups that he wins but sometimes he cheeses people i mean again karage uh, can get upset sometimes but also can make ridiculous upsets same with jogibu same with like fatality nixie if he played so like falcon is just a scary character but matchups don't really matter because he's still going to try to beat your ass except game watch that one matters byleth i i said he if you're an edge guarder you can go here so i think think matchups matter more for byleth than a lot of other characters because like do you outrange the character you probably win do you get outsped and also comboed super hard that matchup sucks and then you get up B at 45 and it kills with either up B back air or the off stage at like 50, just the spike. This character can edge guard doesn't like, that's why Leo was winning so many bad matchups when he was dominating. It's because he would simply just, you know, get people off stage and then Bioth has good tools if you read someone's double jump, you know, the famous Spargo clip, right? So uh, I definitely think matchups matter for Byleth a lot whether good or bad, but you can still win losing ones for sure. Uh, Lucario, matchups don't matter. 
because it's Lucario, it doesn't matter how consistent you are unless you're killing someone at like, maybe like the Kazuya matchup matters specifically. But if you're not a character that's gonna zero to death Lucario, he's gonna get aura and he's gonna do crazy stuff and he's gonna be right and he's gonna counter and you're gonna have to back her and you're gonna have to deal with aura sphere. It doesn't matter. Peach. Um, I definitely think Peach and Daisy are here. Peach and Daisy have ridiculous strengths. They have footstool without a shield in matchups that should be bad. They have turn up trains, they have crazy combos, but at the same time, the characters still do well versus them, right? Like Villager and Isabel do well and it's annoying to get in. Can you win the losing matchups anyway? Yeah, we've seen that with Mudes, right? We've seen that with Ling. We've seen that with all the good Peach players. But at the same time, the matchups do matter, and it is still difficult to win your losing matchups because you have to hit some crazy com like it's like, hey, I have to hit this crazy combo in order to get this, which like comes with like reads and like defensive positioning and all that type of stuff, which is difficult. But you can still win the losing matchups, right? Like Peach and Daisy have the tools to win every single matchup in the game. Even Peach and Daisy's worst matchups are still winnable, right? Um, Little Mac's also in this tier, surprisingly. Even though, of course, Little Mac is a really cheesable character. Character. Um, the cheese is kind of built into the matchups because his recovery is so bad. Um, and it's not like he, like, he, I guess he is still technically here, but matchups do matter more because the matchups are so bad that, like, yeah, you can navigate the minus ones and maybe the minus twos, but he has some minus threes and also there's a lot of them. So, yeah, Peanut can beat a top Lucina player even though it's one of his worst matchups. He can take Shining Mark to game five, but, like, the matchups still do matter a little bit. He just has some tools to outplay, whether it's like an early up kill or KO punch or, the, you know, relying on matchup uh, knowledge. Uh, so, like, some of these matchups are really bad. It doesn't matter. But, like, he can still win them. But, like, he's not up here, in my opinion, because on, like, KO punch is cheese, sure. But, you know, I feel like his losing cheese is kind of built into the character. Uh, so, yeah, I feel like it more defines this tier. Like, he should probably be here, but I'm gonna put him here instead. Incineroar. Matchups don't matter because they either get cheesed or they cheese. Incineroar has a lot of losing matchups, right? He has a ton of losing matchups because people have better advantage states, people have better neutral, and then you're right three times with side B or your super armor goes through it, your super armor there up B, or you get hit at zero and literally die at zero. Um, so matchups don't really matter. He has revenge, he has a bunch of stuff that just invalidates from a player perspective um, losing matchups sometimes, so matchups don't really matter. It's why Skyjacking got second in Collision, losing a bunch of, or sorry, beating a bunch of really bad matchups, and yeah, is he gonna be able to do that all the time? No, right, like, him versus Monty was rough at Collision, but like, also, he could just be right more. Bowser Jr. Uh, again, I think a lot of characters are kind of in this tier. Uh, matchups matter, like, the bad matchups for Bowser Jr. are really bad. The good matchups for Bowser Jr. are quite good, even though he is, like, cheesable, right? But, like, it's not quite as cheesy as, like, this stuff. But it, so it matters, but he got a grab at zero, and he dealt you 70, and then he forward smash two framed you, right? Like, those type of things can happen very frequently. So it's one of those things that's just like, the matchups matter. The Like, you should play the good matchups into Bowser Jr., obviously. And he can, you know, in the matchups that he wins, he does very well in because he walls people out with forward air, does a bunch of good stuff. Uh, but... He gets someone the losing matchups, for sure. Zelda, matchups to find the character, in my opinion. Uh, while Zelda does have some good tools, right, with like Phantom, if it works, is really good, you know, those only work in specific matchups, right? So matchups, in my opinion, define the character. Is it a good matchup for Nehru's Love? Is it a good matchup for Up Out of Shield? Is it a good matchup for, you know, Phantom? If not, it's gonna be rough. Can you get out of disadvantage? If not, it's gonna be rough. I think the matchups absolutely define this character, and I think Zelda, low key is like bottom two, like low key. Bottom two has some good matchups though. Like, like actually doesn't do that bad versus Pika. Can do well versus I think like Ice Climbers as well. But I feel like the good matchups work. It's good. Phantom good. Reflect good. But then the losing matchups, which are more plentiful, also matter. And like it's really hard to win those. Hence why Zelda has had such little success overall. Greninja. I think for Greninja, matchups really matter. Does he have an advantage state? Yes, but a lot of that is predicated on the winning matchups, right? And the matchups that he wins, right? Like Game & Watch does crazy good. The matchups that he is even with, you know, he has the tools and he kind of fights and they all go in and out. It's fine, but the matchups that he loses, in my opinion, they are definitely rough. Uh, whether they out mobility him or don't allow him to use the mobility or, you know, whatever's going on in terms of that, it really defines him again. His matchup chart is good, so he's a good character. But I do think that Greninja isn't a character where it's like, oh my god, he's constantly just overcoming these bad matchups. How do they do that? It's like, no, they're winning when they're supposed to, and they're like winning the even matchups, and yeah, they'll win minus ones. Um, but I don't think it's as big of a deal of just like, you know, it doesn't. It's not like he has 15 losing matchups or something. You know what I'm saying? 
Ice Climbers, matchups define this character. This is one of the characters, in my opinion, that is the most matchup defining character. Because in matchups where Ice Climbers do well, they absolutely snowball. No pun intended. Actually, pun intended. Fuck you, subscribe. But I do think that in the matchups where Ice Climbers do really well, they do really well. And the matchups that they lose, they're not gonna win unless your name is Big D, because he's just better than people. Like, you know, he uses his, like, especially when he was, like, top 20 at the time, he was winning losing matchups because he was simply outplaying people with player things. And he would, like, he would just be right so often, right? Um, but, like, there are so many matchups that are so bad, like Sephiroth and Cloud and Steve, and yes, like, I know he beat Akola, and then Akola destroyed him because he learned a couple things about the matchup. Like, Ice Slammers do benefit from matchup inexperience, one of the most in the game, and I feel like when you play a good matchup against Ice Climbers in a matchup that, like, and you know the matchup, they're not winning. It's so, it's so hard to overcome the losing matchups as Ice Climbers. Like, yeah, you still do a bunch of damage, like, don't get me wrong, but it's so hard to even get those open-ups in the first place. Like, you know, Ice Climbers are going to beat the Fox players and the Mario players and the Sheik players, but they're going to lose to the Cloud players, absolutely. Okay, let's talk about Roy. I think Roy's matchups define the character, or maybe he's, like, here, right? Because he's, like, he's strong and he has a good advantage state. But I think Roy's matchup chart is just very good, right? I don't think Roy loses a ton of matchups. I think he loses, like, five or six in my head that I can think of, right? Where it's, like, Pika, Pichu, uh, Kazuya, I don't know the other ones. But, like, Roy definitely has losing matchups, but I do think that he's a good enough character that he can just be right a couple times. Like, oh, you down tilted someone in 50 and then forward smashed them. Wow, that was such a bad matchup, right? He has a lot of the matchups. He Like, he has a lot of matchups that are very, you know, they're just good matchups for him. And when he loses his losing matchups, yeah, it can happen. But Cola can beat Riddles. Cola's beat me. You know, Cola can beat the, the Pichu players. Goblin can beat the Pichu players. It just, it just, the character has a good matchup chart. But that doesn't mean that he's a cheeser, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, Jab Side B's kind of poor shit. But, you know, it's not like he's here. Like, he's absolutely not here. He's not a cheeser, like, through and through. Or he's not, like, just, like, my game plan is just so strong. Like, he has to play the game, but he's playing a good game. Like, he kills too early to, you know. Actually, I'm gonna put Game of Watch here. He's not even, he's not up here, in my opinion, because his matchup chart's just ridiculous right his advantage state is so good to the point where i think that when people talk like oh game wash loses to lucina and he loses to ike no he doesn't he actually just hits them once and kills them but that's a built-in part of the matchup that's not like oh i'm just gonna eventually be right because his neutral tools are so strong and like chef for ledge trapping is so strong and up yada shield is so strong that like in order to beat game and watch even in his bad matchups you still have to be playing absolutely perfectly so he can win his losing matchups which are like three matchups I don't think Game & Watch loses many matchups. It's like, to Sonic, to Brawler, and even then Brawler has to play Ridiculous, right? And that's only because Brawler has a bunch of cheese as he's up here. And who else? Zero Suit? I think that matchup's even. I think Steve is even. Rosa, I guess, because Rosa's like range is so big that it doesn't matter. But like Game & Watch has just a bunch of even and winning matchups. So yeah, matchups matter. And then he can win his like four losing matchups. It's fine. Shulk, I think Shulk's even. Cloud, I think Cloud's even. Aegis, maybe, but like, how do you how do you lose to Aegis when you have like Parry F tilt? Min Min, matchups don't matter and they get cheesed. I dude, in theory, Min Min is like top eight. She's so good. And then you someone catches on to your pattern just a little bit and you die. Her disadvantage sucks. Her recovery is bad. Like specific situations, it's fine when you can throw out your arms safely, but that so there's so many characters that just like tap Min Min by accident and then kill her. So she's she gets cheesed like she's a really consistent character also has cheese um so like the losing matchups sometimes she just kills you anyway and then the winning matchups sometimes you just die this character is so inconsistent it sucks like that's why people are like Min Min's top 10 i'm like you're on drugs or play a, such a bad matchup it doesn't matter jigglypuff matchups matter but you can definitely win losing ones i don't think puff is like a super cheeser character like she is because she has rest and she has downer and did you see how base play plays against me it was crazy he had to cheese me to win but at the same time matchups do definitely matter for puff like she's an edge guarder so she can definitely win losing matchups and she has a bunch of tools to overcome her bad matchups but the matchups are still hard and you can tell how much harder the jigglypuff is trying to get a single hit or a single like open up which can lead to a bunch but it is really really difficult for her to win neutral in those ways um but she can and so she can win the losing matchups does that make sense pikachu matchups define the character in my opinion obviously like pikachu has really good strengths right he has upper bridges and he has recovering and he has edge guarding even i i mentioned edge guarding right in and i said that like most edge guarders are going to be here 
But the thing is, Pikachu's edge guarding is almost always baked into the matchup, and most of the losing matchups for Pikachu or the difficult matchups for Pikachu aren't really edge guardable characters, right? You have Mario, who's like kind of hard to edge guard unless he has no resources. You have Game and Watch, who's not really edge guardable. You have Ness, that is risky to edge guard when he has his resources, and then really easy otherwise. Um, I think Pikachu's matchup chart is insanely good. Right? It is ridiculously strong. I think his matchup chart is ridiculous. But he's not really a character that that's cheesed, and he's also not really a cheeser character because his edge guards are crazy. Like you get like reads with like thunder and stuff. But I think Pikachu's matchup chart is just ridiculous, and that makes him a good character. And when the Pikachu players are losing, it's because we're not playing well enough as people. Um, but like you're not edge guarding Pac-Man. Unless you get a very specific stuff, right? So I think the matchups just define Pikachu, and the reason he is top four is because his matchup chart is insanely good. Ganondorf, matchups to find the character. It's really hard to win as Ganondorf because there are characters that just win overall and he doesn't have enough combos, he doesn't have enough cheese to like, you know, he's gonna kill you at 40 sometimes if he reads your forward smash, but he's hitting you with a frame 30 option. That's a player diff more than like a, oh, my character did it versus your character. It's just like, you guessed so hard correctly as your character, as like, as Ganon, it's fine. The Belmonts. I think matchups matter, but you can definitely win the losing ones for Belmonts, because the thing is, there's a lot of characters that do really well versus Belmonts, right? Like, Pika is a great example. Um, but a lot of the times, you can win losing ones because the negatives of Belmont is like, oh, their disadvantage isn't great. They can get edge guarded. Uh, but at the same time, if you just don't get in, it's really scary, right? Like, again, Dom was doing really well versus me, and then I got in and killed him, right? At, like, 0% multiple times. But you can just hard outplay the entire time, and Belmont's tools aren't, like, so hard that that's impossible, which is why Dom has done well versus a lot of good players. So... Yeah, I think Belmont can definitely win the losing matchups because you just don't give them that opportunity, and sometimes the Belmont players are simply just playing that good. You love T3 Dom? He's so good. And of course, the matchups that Belmonts win, like, they win pretty hard, because I feel like those characters aren't the edgeguarding ones. Um, like, you know, you're not going to get edgeguarded by an Ice Climbers, you know what I'm saying? Ike. Uh, in my opinion, matchups define Ike. I feel like the characters that deal with Nair do really well versus Ike, and there's not much you can do about him. The characters that Nair does really well against, he's going to do well against, right? If the character can edgeguard him or ignore his side B recovery, that really matters. Uh, and it's not really like an, oh my god, I can just character diff. Like, it's like, no. Like, yeah, some players might get Nair up aired anyway. Falco. Matchups don't matter for Falco, they just cheese. You're gonna hit your combo. His advantage state in his combo game is ridiculous. So it really matters to play super perfect against Falco. And you can't do that, you're gonna get cheesed. You're gonna get combo for 80%. It doesn't matter what character you are. You're going to get super hard combo. You're going to get edge guarded. Like, he has so many things that just win losing matchups for free. Well, not for free, of course. You just have to like still be good. Uh, but like Falco's matchup, his poor, his poor matchups don't matter for the most part. Like, you can win every every match. Falco can win every matchup in the game. Like, if you do well versus Steve and can, like, you know, hit Game Watch at 65 and kill him, like, you're fine. Olimar. I think Olimar is one of those characters that he is incredibly matchup dependent. In matchups where Olimar does well, he is a great pick. Even matchups, so good. Losing matchups, wow, it is so hard to play him through, like, sword characters and wolf and, like, Fox, like Fox, it's so hard, it's so hard to play Olimar in his losing matchups. But also his winning matchups are crazy because you have Samus who he destroys. And there are so many characters that Olimar just does well against and just shuts down, no problem. If you play Olimar, you're never gonna lose those matchups, right? But that, you know, he's a good character, but the matchups define him, right? Like if you if it's a bad matchup for Olimar, don't go Olimar at all, you know what I'm saying? Let's get all the debuzz characters out of the way, because I already did Min Min. Let's do Rosa. Rosa's also matchups to find the character. I think that if you have the ability to get rid of Luma super easily and you can disadvantage state, or like peep Rosa in disadvantage state, or if Rosa's neutral isn't as good, because there are plenty of matchups where that's the case, this character is so struggling. She can win by huge player differences. But overall, like if it's a bad matchup for Rosa, you shouldn't be going Rosa. That's why debuzz plays these th different characters, right? Like he plays these three characters. Uh, because it's like, hey, whoever the good matchup is, I'm going to play it. And if these two characters struggle, I'm going to hope I cheese you with Mimin, even if Mimin technically loses. Like, absolutely, this is a matchup. It's a matchup character. I'm going to go over the probably the biggest one still, Steve. Matchups don't matter. For Steve, 
because diamond exists and because nil combos exist and because he can just at any percent because he puts a block off stage after spiking you and you die or he does the blocks and then he you know tbc forwarders you off of the block and he spikes you and kills you or he hits you at a billion percent or he does all this stuff like matchups don't matter versus steve it's like do you play really 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 well versus steve you can do well but also the steve is playing on his stuff and is comboing it's so hard to consistently beat steve and that's why even in the matchups that are supposedly bad for Steve, a cola can just win anyway. And like sometimes it's player diff, right? But sometimes it's just like, oh, you got put in a really complex situation and lost because Steve is Steve, right? Like you landed on the anvil, you're dead. Oh, so dumb. Palutena. I think matchups to find the character, or sorry, matchups matter, but you can definitely win the losing ones. There's definitely a lot of losing matchups, or not a lot. There's definitely losing matchups for Palutena, like Pika and Pichu and like Inkling and stuff like that. But um, she has a good enough advantage state where it doesn't really matter sometimes. Her disadvantage is strong enough that sometimes it doesn't really matter. Her movement's ridiculous. So it's one of those like wolf that it's like, yeah, like you have losing matches, but you can just move better. Like you can just out mobility your opponent. There's very few characters that that's not the case for. It's like Aegis and Sonic. And I don't know how the matchups are anyway, because you have a good advantage state. Like a good advantage state plus, you know, good mobility is great. I wouldn't call her a cheeser character because she's pretty straightforward. Um, same with wolf, right? But you know, it's still strong, if that makes sense. You're supposed to win Inkling Palu? Yeah, Inkling beats Palu, or at least did back in, you know, old meta. Matchups matter, but you can definitely win the losing ones. I wouldn't call Snake a cheesy character. I think Snake is one of the biggest beneficiaries of people not understanding the matchup, uh, including, like, uh, players that are supposed to be good at the matchup, like me. Like, sometimes you're just off a little bit, and things can snowball really hard. But matchups matter, right? In matchups that Snake does really well, he will win fairly consistently, but, uh, I would say it's like he's one of the other ways, or he's one of the both like aspects of like he can win losing ones because you can just be right and you can get the up tilt kills and you can get all these little things or you can like be right and disadvantage a lot. But also he can lose winning matchups pretty easily because you're just like slightly off or your or your opponent just like hard read stuff for no reason, uh, and it can be really really difficult to consistently win as Snake when he has a disadvantage state that looks like that. Um, and like a neutral that, you know, he doesn't really have things that are safe on shield and stuff. So it can be pretty rough in that regard. I'm going to skip this song because it is very loud. Kazuya Mishima. Uh, low key. No, he's here. Matchups matter, of course. Like matchups can matter for Kazuya. Like his bad matchups can sometimes matter. Um, actually, I am going to put him more here because his bad matchups are really bad. His bad matchups are so bad that they matter anyway, even though he's a zero death character. The slight losing matchups like Pika, that doesn't really matter. You can just get the hit. But matchups like Sonic and matchups like uh, Steve are really hard. And that's why you don't see the Kazuya players winning those. It's because they're so bad that it's really hard to overcome them, even though he's a zero death character. Because how the f how are you hitting electric on a Sonic? How are you hitting electric on a Steve that will just blatantly run away the whole time? It's really, really hard to do that. So he can lose, he can win losing matchups because the matchups aren't always minus three, but he has some really bad, really bad tournament matchups. Again, two of the most common characters in the meta right now, Sonic and Steve, he does like really poorly against. So I think those matter, uh, but not, not like every, every matchup doesn't matter. Every losing matchup doesn't matter, if that makes sense. Low key, matchups define Sonic. The thing is his matchup chart's just crazy. Right, it's like Pika, where in the good matchups, he's going to win. In the bad matchups, he's going to struggle, but can still win because he doesn't have a matchup worse than minus one, right? Like if you're gonna lose, you know, more often than not, that doesn't mean you can't win those matchups because Sonic's strengths are still really good. I would maybe want to put him in the upper tier, but the thing is like, as in like uh, the middle tier here, but I think the thing is, the Sonic players are just optimizing so hard that he's simply just losing less and less matchups and is getting better and better because they are just, they're just good, right? They're just so good with the edge guarding. Like there's so many things that the Sonic players are just optimized to ridiculous lengths that, you know, when you win, you win those matchups. And when you lose, you can still do well or he's just like making the losing matchups less bad. So they're like even and stuff like that. Does that make sense? Luigi. Um, contrary to popular belief, I don't believe Luigi's up here because his, like, his bad things are bad enough that, um, I don't think, like, when he wins, he does really well because he, like, wins sometimes in neutral, but there are a lot of bad matchups for this character, right? Um, you have the Belmonts, you have, uh, like, 
Pac-Man, you have Sephiroth. There are some abhorrent matchups for Luigi that you're not coming back from. Uh, I, I don't know if, like, Lugi has, like, beat Strix or any, like, top uh, Sephiroths. But I think it's so hard. Of course, he can win losing matchups, right? Because he can just get the hit and he can, you know, zero to death or he can edge guard or he can, like, down you at a disadvantage. Um, but I don't think it's, like, this bad where it's like, oh, all of his losing matchups are fine. Or on all of his winning matchups are, you know, like, that's why he's losing because he's getting cheese. It's like, no, like, that's Luigi's weaknesses. Um, but I don't think it's, like, up here level of just, like, oh, you have to be so ready for my game plan all the time because the way to deal with Luigi is a little bit simpler than some of these other characters. Inkling. Matchups define the character. This is one of the problems for Inkling is the matchups that are hard for her. She doesn't really have a super big way to win, but the matchups that are good are good. Like Snake. Great matchup. Um, Palutena, great matchup, but you're not gonna always be running into those in tournaments, so it's hard, really hard to be consistent with this character because you're gonna lose your losing matchups and you're gonna win your winning matchups. But the matchup chart's not good enough to like be comfortable like this, like Pika and Sonic. King DDD, matchups find this character and the matchups are bad. If you deal with Gordo, you run really well. If you don't get Ash Tag 2 frame, you do really well. The matchup that DDD is well against, it's really hard to deal with, right? If you're bad at dealing with Gordo, if you're bad at dealing with forward air and forward tilt and stuff like that, it's really good. But he's not really a cheeser character, unless he's gonna dash tag or forward smash you, but like those are kind of built into the matchup, I feel like. Like he wins because of those things, not like, but it's not like he loses despite them or something like that. Joker. Uh, of course, Joker's gonna be in this middle tier. Matchups matter, but you can definitely win the losing ones. I think that the matchups that are hard for Joker definitely are rough, right? Like Sonic Joker, Pika Joker, those are hard. And if you're winning those, it's because you are hard out playing as a player. I mean, we have MKLeo, the best player in the world for a long time, was able to win losing matchups because he was just better. So you can definitely win the losing matchups, but they matter, right? And the winning matchups, of course, also matter, right? The characters that have really, uh, like, have trouble dealing with his neutral and gun and his edge guarding, like, they struggle versus him. Uh, so yeah, I think I definitely think matchups matter for him, both good and bad. But you can of course win the losing ones. He has Arsene. What do you mean? He has Arsene. Of course he can lose the. Or sorry, of course he can win the losing matchups. And also sometimes he's edge guardable, so of course he can still lose his winning matchups. Sheik. I think Sheik is one of those characters like Pika and Sonic. That's like she's a good character, and her matchups define her. I think the matchups that are hard for Sheik are really hard, like Mario. Pac-Man, Ice Slimers. It's really, really difficult to consistently win those or to bring those back because you are already playing with a hand stacked against you. But the matchups that Sheik does really well in, those are fantastic because how are they gonna deal with all these oppressive tools, right? So like, I feel like her tools are so like obvious and strong that it's like, if it does well, Sheik wins the matchup. If they do not do well, Sheik loses the matchup. And then it's really hard to like come back from that because it's not like she has like just she doesn't really have cheese. She just has like really crazy combos. But again, those are kind of built into a matchup. Bowser, matchups define this character. I think that, uh, well, I guess I'm gonna put Bowser here actually because he has flame breath two framing and forward tilt two framing. So even though this character should be in the bottom tier, um, sometimes you're just gonna get thrown off stage in flame breath or die at 75 to a forward tilt two frame. Again, the matchups do matter because the winning matchups are great for Bowser and the losing matchups are still really rough, but some of the losing characters are characters that are light, so get exploited by just dying really early. And for that reason, basically, matchups matter, but you can definitely win some of the losing ones. Like, you're not winning matchups like Steve or Peach, but you, like, might win Pika. You shouldn't win Pika, but you might win Pika. <gasps> Piranha Plant! Uh, Piranha Plant, I think, matchups matter, but you can definitely win the losing ones. Again, I don't think that Plant is a good character, but this character can snowball, right? Good edge guarding, Patui stuff can really frustrate people, uh, whether it's them trying to land or trying to get random hits, or, you know, the edge guards that Plant can get are very, very good. So I definitely think Plant is matchups matter, but you can definitely win the losing ones. He does have a lot of bad matchups that are like, oh, this is just actually super bad. Those can be a struggle for sure. But with Poison Cloud snowballing and stuff like that, that can be a big deal. Of course, you have to deal with characters that have like reflectors that are also like not bad in disadvantage, uh, which can be really hard. But like he can win his losing matchups. It depends on which ones, but he can win some of them. Me Gunner. Uh, uh, I'm gonna put Me Gunner here. I do think Me Gunner is a bit underrated by most people, but I do think the matchups define who she does well or bad versus, right? I do think that Me Gunner has a good amount of even matchups. So of course, even matchups, you can win if you're the better player. 
Uh, I think that even though she has some slight losses, she can definitely win those. But the harder the matchups get for her, the much more difficult it is for her to bring a comeback because she's more of a consistency character. Like, oh, I'm going to out neutral you, I'm going to ledge trap you, and I'm going to like do all these different setups. But at the same time... Some of the matchups are really bad. Like, Capitan Cito went Dr. Mario versus Light. You counterpick to a bottom five character, a bottom 10 character, however bad you think Doc is, because that matchup is so bad, if that makes sense. So like, yeah, you can win some bad matchups, uh, because like some of those winning matchups, like, oh, they might have a bad disadvantage, or they might, you know, get ledge trapped or something. But I feel like even though Me Gunner's matchups are better overall than people think, I do think, you know, it's hard to win those losing matchups. But it's also hard to lose the winning matchups because you're just gonna have control went doc yeah and it was game five uh let's finish off the Mies. me sword fighter um i'm gonna say is here in matchups matter but you can definitely win some losing ones i think that the character's edge guarding is a little too strong to say that the matchups define the character um of course some of the matchups that like you just don't die against the character because it's really hard to whiff punish you or you're just really mobile and annoying those can be really rough or like characters that you're not getting edge guards against can be rough like rob that matchup sucks but if you are like playing matchups that it's like oh i lose but i can get the edge guard those matchups definitely winnable right downers crazies uh super super slash dash or whatever it's called ssd is crazy uh you know he has a he has really good strengths in my opinion of course his weaknesses are like you know lack of super good frame data overall like he has down tilt which is crazy but you know, it's, it's kind of hard to control me sword fighter, like, because, like, down tilt's so small, it's like, you can't hit people in the air, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but I think he's obviously underrated. I think even before Mia started doing crazy, I was like, yeah, me sword fighter's, like, pretty good, obviously. I was a proponent of him for a while, at least after seeing Shishio. I think that because you have the edge guarding, it's not the worst thing ever. Pichu! Matchups don't matter. I oh, know they do. It's really funny. I feel like the worst matchups for Pichu definitely matter the losing matchups, right? Like Mario, Pac-Man, those matchups are so bad that it does not matter because you're not gonna be able to camp, you're not gonna be able to do enough damage, but at the same time, Pichu just kind of kills you and thunders you and edge guards you. So he definitely has a lot of good stuff going for him, but like the matchups that are really bad are really bad for a reason, right? Like the SDI can help out, get out of the combos with the disadvantage state is like pretty good. Um, but like, he does really well in his winning matchups, I think. Uh, but of course, like, even then, it's like, oh, but he can also get cheesed at the same time because he's light as hell. So, yeah. Samus. Not just matter, but you can definitely win the losing ones. So, some of Samus's matchups are really bad, right? Like, mostly Olimar. Olimar is by far the worst one. But I feel like Samus's tools are good enough that she can win the other losing matchups, like Min Min and Falco, because she has good scrapping tools. She has good edge guarding, And, of course, she has the best edge trapping in the game. So if you have the best edge trapping in the game and you throw someone off stage, you're probably going to kill them. Or at least deal a bunch of percent. Because that's just how Samus works. So you can win the losing matchups as long as it's not, like, specifically Olimar. I think Olimar is, like, far and away the worst matchup for Samus. Mario. Matchups don't matter as Mario. Except maybe Shulk. Because you just kill people. You just kill people. You, you combo the character forever. You get so many crazy things. You can edge guard. You have Flood. You have Cape. You have so many good things that it doesn't matter if a matchup is minus one or minus two because like, oh, you just get walled down, you can't, it doesn't matter. You just kill people. Like, except for maybe Shulk. Shulk might actually be super bad, but at the same time, I feel like most people are just bad versus Shulk and don't know how to deal with shield art. Shulk and Loki Game of Watch. Well, like, Game of Watch wins because he plays the game. Shulk doesn't play the game. I don't know. I, I'm still a believer. Like, the Mario mains get mad at me every time I say it. I still don't think the Mario Game of Watch is that bad. Bayonetta. Bayonetta is not going to be in the cheese category just because certain SDI flowcharts as certain matchups like Fox and Me Brawler really matter. It's really hard to combo some of the fast fallers sometimes, but a lot of the like barely losing matchups, Bayo can definitely win because she does a billion damage, gets a witch time, gets an edge guard. She has a lot of tools to win at any point. Uh, but of course, like winning matchups are going to be really good versus her. Or sorry, really good as her because the winning strength is like, oh, you don't have a super good punish for all my specials. You get timed out. You get whatever, whatever in that instance. So, yeah, it can be really rough fighting against Bayonetta in uh, matchups that Bayo wins. But when Bayo loses, other than, like, Fox, like, you know, fast fallers, I feel like she can get a bunch of good stuff. DK. Matchups matter, but you can definitely win the losing ones. I think there are certain matchups for DK that are really, really, really hard and difficult to play. Like, honestly, worst one probably being Pika. I think Chunky Kong has said that, like, Pika is the worst matchup for DK at this point. Uh, but you have DKO. You have uh, Cargo. You have... 
giant punch. You have a disadvantage that, like, even though it's not great, it can kill people because it turns into down B up smash, or it turns into fair into up air, or it turns into a reversal and then he up airs you, or back air. Um, so I think matchups matter for DK for sure, but like you can still win the losing ones because you get a you get the grab, you get the big hit or whatever, and DK is a character that can absolutely do that. So I think he definitely deserves to be in this tier. I think Mewtwo matchups define the character because like Mewtwo has really good tools, right? He has a, he's fast, he has Shadow Ball, he has good combos, but again, those are some of the things that are baked into the matchup, and I don't think that it is uh, so, like, his tools make sense. So if you have characters that do well versus the tools, you're gonna be fine. And if you're a character that does not do well versus the tools, you're not gonna be fine. So I definitely think Mewtwo's is very, like, matchup to find the character. Also, he can't get cheesed because he has, like, his tail hurtbox and stuff like that, and he's light, which is, like, not good. But also, I feel like that doesn't happen as much as, like, people think it does. So, I think it's, I think he's, like, a consistent character. He's just consistently mid. Isabel, I said it. If you are a character that can edge guard, you're gonna be in this tier. I think that, yeah, they have some rough matchups, but you throw some characters off stage and they die. You nair them. You, I mean, you, uh, you can jab people at the ledge as Isabel. You can bowling ball. Like, they both have some swingy stuff. And of course, edge guarding is going to be a great asset tree as well for Villager. Um, so, like, yeah, matchups matter for them. Like, they're not a great character because they have a bunch of losing matchups. But I don't think that, uh, it's as bad as a lot of people think it is, and it's why they can just randomly win. It's because, like, oh, they got an edge guard, or oh, they got a two-frame, or oh, they got, you know. Something that's very, like, very realistic is the best way to say it. Banjo! Uh, I think batch matchups really define Banjo. His good matchups are good, and I think his bad matchups are bad. I think that, obviously, players can get impatient, but if, you know, the players play the matchup correctly, I think that, oh, whoops. I think if the players play the matchup correctly, it'll be fine. But like people get impatient, like players get impatient, which I'm not gonna say is a character thing. Like, oh, like character's so good because people got impatient. Um, but like he has some pretty good matchups in my opinion. So I'm gonna say this, matchups matter, but you can definitely win the losing ones. Uh, I think that Ness, obviously his good matchups are very good, right? I think he it's a little bit hard for him to lose his winning matchups, like he can, but for the most part, his winning matchups are very consistent and the character is so explosive, right? Magnet's hard to deal with. He has ridiculous two framing, great kill throws and stuff like that. I'm not gonna say every matchup of his is realistically like winnable because like Game & Watch exists. Uh, but I think for, if it's not like his literal worst matchups, he's fine because he can advantage state super hard. He has a really tricky disadvantage that's hard for a lot of players to deal with, or sorry, a lot of characters to deal with. Um, and he has like ridiculous combos and stuff that just kills people super early. So he can just win the losing matchups just like that. Uh, it's not quite up here where it's like, it doesn't matter. Like the losing matchups still matter, but he can win anyway, as opposed to like a well, lol what losing matchup. You know what I'm saying? So I find it funny that Ryu and Ken are here, but Kazuya is here. Aegis, Aegis is up here. Like this is basically the, the characters of like, these are good tournament characters or really bad tournament characters. And I think obviously Krom and Aegis are the bad tournament characters because it doesn't matter how much you're winning. Sometimes you can just die at zero. Sometimes you're gonna get off stage and then you're gonna do the Cosmos air dodge. And I don't blame Cosmos for doing the air dodge because the character sometimes just struggles. Can they win by just playing super consistent and never losing neutral and always being good in those aspects? Absolutely, Aegis is broken, super good character. But the reason she's not like the second best character in the game is because sometimes she just dies versus like almost any character in the game. So they're broken, but they can get cheesed, right? Like they're just good Krom. Shulk, matchups don't matter because you can just get a kill anyway. He's not really a cheesable character in my opinion because you have shield art and jump art and you know, it's really hard to do that. Like it's really hard to cheese Shulk. Like you have to cheese him like multiple, multiple times, which can be very difficult. Uh, but at the same time, forward throw smash hard at 40. Bop. Bop. So like, stupid, dumb character. Terry, matchups don't matter as Terry. Like, obviously there are certain things that matter and there are certain matchups that are still hard for him, but then you're at 100% and then you down tilt forward tilt Buster Wolf at 45 and you win or you do a landing nair down tilt up tilt into power geyser and break someone's shield and then kill them or you know it you know automatically guaranteed you had to drop shield against that and you died 80. 
Um, sorry, maybe like 100 with bad DI or with good DI if you're super ready for that situation. You, like, you can get edge guarded, sure, but like auto cancel power dunk being plus three, it's like, oh, you have to super perfectly space it and also it's big, so it's hard to whiff punish. Like, yeah, good character. Uh, Zero Suit. Magic Matter, but you can definitely win the losing ones because her biggest strength is mobility. So you can just be more mobile and you can just be correct. Right, like Zero Suit has the tools to beat any character in the game. Is she going to consistently? No. It's really hard to do that because her tools aren't overwhelmingly good to the point of being up here. Like her strengths aren't that strong other than she's fast and can time you out. But I think that Zero Suit's strengths, like she can just get those big hits, right? She can nair flip kick you. She can reads with the down smash, like put you in situations where you're going to get down smashed. She can condition people. She can edge guard, even though her edge guarding is not like the best. Um, she can even beat Steve. Well, I think Zero Suit like beats Steve. So, but like Zero Suit definitely, it's not like, oh, I'm going to lose my bad matchups every single time. Otherwise, Mars would always lose to Cola and always lose to me. But Mars is like never lost to me except for once, which was grand final set one. And then he beat me in set two. Like, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to like consistently win a Zero Suit, but you can still win those matchups. Absolutely. Corby. Low key, Kirby's better than people think, but I definitely think Kirby can uh, win losing matchups because you crouch and your forward tilt and you're like the characters like if you're gonna blatantly run away the entire time versus kirby yeah like the really bad matchups are really bad for a reason right like kirby sonic uh kirby whoever with high mobility if you're not getting edge guard like kirby rob seems really bad as well but like this character down tilt trips you at 55 and you get forward smash and die this character does forward throw forward air dash turn around up tilt up tilt upper upper back air and does a lot of damage so like Character can just do stuff. Have you seen J-Jaw play? And again, J-Jaw's really good, right? But like Kirby has the tools to just win anyway. Also, again, edge guarder, right? And also you can get their powers and change matchups really annoyingly. Pac-Man! Matchups matter, but you can definitely win losing ones because this character does too much damage and can edge guard and has a billion setups that if you're not ready for every single setup all the time, you're just gonna lose. I hate this character. Not up here, not a cheeser character, just a like like winning matchups are great for Pac-Man. Losing matchups are sometimes rough. But you can also still win because whoops, you got a Galaga, or whoops, you were just running at someone with Bell and just 70. You're dead. So, yeah. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Mega Man. I think Mega Man, the way Peebnut plays Mega Man, it's very similar to Sonic, where it's like Mega Man, or sorry, Peebnut specifically is optimizing these matchups in a way where the matchups just aren't that bad anymore and he still defines the matchups right so like characters that you think would do well versus Mega Man don't necessarily and when they're playing on point there's just so much counterplay and there's so many tools that Mega Man just has that can deal with basically every single situation so matchups define the character and the matchups are getting really really scary Sora matchups don't matter against Sora he's just gonna try to combo you like yeah the air dodges you know, rough. But he can just combo you and kill you. So doesn't matter if like he struggles to get in sometimes. It doesn't it's up air. Up doesn't matter what his matchups are. He's gonna kill you. It doesn't matter. Toon Link. Um, I think matchups matter for Toon Link, but you can definitely win the losing ones. He has a good enough, like he has a versatile enough game plan because he can use bombs in different ways and like be over his boomerangs and stuff like that. That like, even though he is, his tools are simple, he can use them in a variety of ways that make it really difficult. He also has a good dash attack, good forward tilt, good edge guarding, um, up he had a shield. So he has tools that are very useful in a bunch of situations. And yeah, does he have losing matchups? Sure, but you can still win those losing matchups because you can just hit that bomb fair at 70. Like, it's not like he gets completely shut down by many characters. And if he does that, I'm not aware of. Whoops, my bad. Young Link. Um, low key. Young Link, in my opinion, is a little bit more defined matchup-wise, uh, but like his matchup chart is better, right? But I think like the losing matchup for Young Link, it's because they can deal with his projectiles and stuff well, and you know his his stuff doesn't flow the same as Toon Link's because he doesn't have like as good of a forward air, for example. Uh, so Young Link, I feel like the matchup chart is better, but it's more defined. I feel like Young Link isn't going to be like making crazy comebacks and crazy things and like defy the odds and the matchups. Like it's really hard to win the matchups that Young Link loses, but he just doesn't lose very many of them. Ridley. This is for you, Caden. Ridley's a cheeser. No, it's not that like that. Uh, Ridley has definitely the matchups matter for Ridley. Characters that bully him in combos or bully him off stage can be really rough. But then he command grabs you at 90. Or, you know, down throw forward or forward or forward airs you. Or forward smash two frames you. So he definitely has a bunch of cheese. 
that can help you win your losing matchups. And he has some like, you know, really intense reads like uppies off stage and stuff like that that can swing games on their head and make people respect things um, that can't, that aren't necessarily like good to do, but they're good in certain situations. So I think Ridley like lose a lot of matchups and there are definitely some matchups that you're not gonna win like Game & Watch, that one is so bad. Uh, but like when Ridley wins a matchup, he wins it pretty hard in my opinion. Like I don't think like, I think his winning matchups, like, because his tools are just blatantly better against that other characters. Um, and, like, he's bad enough that it's not like, oh, you just disadvantage. Like, his disadvantage is, like, you know, can be really bad. But, like, because those are built into the matchups. So the matchups that, like, just advantage him forever, he already loses. You know what I'm saying? Fox. Matchups matter for Fox, but you can definitely win the losing ones. Obviously, you can also lose the winning ones because he still has a somewhat exploitable recovery. Uh, but I think Fox has the tools to win any matchup in the game. You see Light, he beats me sometimes, which is like his worst matchup. Or he beats Game of Watch players, or he beats Shulk players, and he's beat Luigi players. Has he beat a Shulk player? I actually don't know that one. Uh, I, I don't know if Light and Kome have ever played. But um, Light's, a, or sorry, Fox is a good enough character that it's like, oh, you got the one hit that you like really needed. You're dead. It doesn't matter what character you are. He just got the hit and he's dead. Or he tells 70. So, like, Fox can absolutely win all of his losing matchups. He can also sometimes get cheesed. So, like, he loses characters that he, like, he shouldn't necessarily. But all the matchups are doable and, you know, literally have won at top level multiple times. So, yeah. We Fit Trainer. Uh, matchups define Wii Fit Trainer, in my opinion. I think the bad matchups for WeFit are really bad. Pika, Gaming to Watch. Um, I don't know the other bad ones other than those two. I think WeFit does fine in a lot of matchups, which means that WeFit Trainer can win against a lot of characters that, you know, maybe people would be surprised at in the winning matchups or like even matchups and stuff like that. I think WeFit has a lot of even matchups, uh, has a good crouch, has good normals, even if they are a bit awkward sometimes. But I think WeFit, like, if the matchup is bad, it's bad for a reason. If the matchup is good, it's good for a reason, right? If you can't deal with her ledge camping, if you can't deal with her projectiles, if she's gonna kill you super early, um, those matchups can be really rough, but if you're just a character that shuts down her offense because you're short, or your offense is just better, or you have really good out of shield, it's hard. Uh, Wario. Wario matchups don't matter. Except maybe Sonic, but also, you know, he cheesed, like, Glutob cheesed Ken by wafting him. You're a waft character. It doesn't matter how much you're losing by. You're just like, oh man, this matchup is so bad in air. Oh man, this matchup is so bad up tilt. Oh man, this matchup is so bad F tilt two frame. Oh man, the matchup is... It doesn't matter. It's Wario. It's Wario. Uh, Yoshi. I think Yoshi, the matchups matter, right? Like, good matchups are good. Losing matchups are hard. But Yoshi's advantage state is strong enough. And, of course, like, double jump upper is always going to be good to the point where you're going to win all the losing matchups because you can just air mobility people and you can just edge guard people. You can just get whatever you need uh, to win. I think that makes total sense. It's one of the reasons why Yoshi Dora is able to win losing matchups like fairly consistently. It's because he's just like, yeah, I can just use Yoshi's really good tools, but like better than you. Robin. I think matchups define Robin as a character because if you can deal with the projectiles or you can deal with 11 aerials, it's really hard to win as Robin. Uh, I think that Robin has a lot of like strengths, right? Like edge trapping is really good and can kill super early and like has good projectiles. But if you can just nullify those because your matchup is good against them, you're going to have a hard time as a Robin player. But if you don't have good tools against that, Robin's going to have a field in. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be great. So yeah, matchups to the character. Um, Sephiroth. Sephiroth has wings, so I literally can't put him in the bottom tier. Uh, but I think he's probably like the most, he's the most inconsiderate, sorry, the closest to this tier of any character in this tier, because it's like the matchups that Sephiroth struggles in are a real struggle, but also the matchups that Sephiroth does well in, who boy, he's going to do great. Like you're not losing Sephiroth Luigi. I can probably like take like, at least like two games in a best of five against Lugi as my Sephiroth and I don't play that character because the matchup is so bad. That's also an exaggeration. Lugi would obviously destroy my Sephiroth. This is a disclaimer for the angry Europeans in my chat. Lugi would beat my Sephiroth. You get it? It's fine. Um, but yeah, the good matchups for Sephiroth are great, but there are more bad matchups, but he can still win them because like XD, he has wing. So it's fine. Lucina. Lucina has shield breaker and good edge guarding. So you literally can just win and against any character. You're losing, you're dead at 40 because of fully charged of forward smash. So, yeah, Lucina is a character that obviously the losing matchups matter, right? The, str the characters that she struggles against are obviously an uphill battle because it's a losing matchup. That's the point. But she can overcome those, absolutely. I don't know what Lucina's worst matchup is, though. She has range, though, so it's hard. I don't know. Uh, Pokemon Trainer. Pokemon Trainer is too cheesy. 
maybe not quite this high. I'm going to say, like, maybe the closest to that tier and this tier. Because there are some matchups that still shut down Pokemon Trainer, like Young Link and stuff. But, like, no, I'm going to put you up here. You're an edge guarding character. So you can obviously always get edge guards. You have things, you have great two framing. You have down air as Ivysaur. You have Nair as Ivysaur. You have, you know, stuff as Charizard. You also have back air as Charizard. And so you, you're one of the best rage characters in the game. So you rage farm, um, you know, get all those uh, Twitter impressions, and then back air someone. So, cheesy character. Very consistent sometimes, but also a ton of cheese. So, matchups don't matter. It doesn't matter if your matchup is, like, really bad versus this character. You, or, like, as this character, you're just going to get a back there back here. It's fine. I'm putting Link in his own tier. Link is weird. I don't know what to think about Link. Because he's like, has strengths. I don't know if his matchup super matter because you can just play differently or you can just get the bomb stuff. But also, the bomb stuff is so inconsistent. I, have, I literally have no idea. Link is the most confusing character in the game to me, and that is going to be it for this one. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, social media, stride and partner stuff is down below. Let me know what other tier lists you want me to do for the next tier list Tuesday, and I'll see you all next time. Peace. I am actually going to be ending stream, though. So, goodbye, YouTube. Goodbye, YouTube. Thanks for joining, YouTube.